Hi again everyone. Um, if you remember in my last video I had mentioned that I needed to fit a couple of train detector modules um, over at the depot area of my layout. Um, I had forgot to do these when I did the rest of them. I must have got busy with something else and just forgot to fit them, um, which I need to do now or very soon anyway. Um, but I thought I would take this opportunity just to give you um, a little bit of insight into the detectors that I'm using um, in case and you know in case anybody else is maybe thinking about adding train detection to the layout um, you know just to let you see what I'm using I know there's quite a few different makes and types of train detector um, you know depending on how much you want to pay I suppose and how sophisticated you want it to be um, I went pretty much for basic train detection I just all I really wanted was um, was just a simple you know, a red LED or a green LED, you know, showing whether a track was occupied or unoccupied. Um, and uh, I went for the um, the block signalling. Um, this is the BOD2NS um, infrared train detector module. Um, very straightforward to use um, and wire up. It comes with um, four programs built into it. Um, one of them, uh, well, actually five, including a lamp test mode. You can test your LEDs. Uh, to make sure everything's connected up okay and your LEDs is working okay, um, and then you've got four programs that you can build, uh, you can program into it. Um, you've got the instantaneous mode, which is which comes as a default. The uh, module's already set up for the default, uh, the instantaneous mode, which incidentally is the mode that I use mine on. I haven't programmed mine at all. I'm quite happy with mine set in the default mode. Then you've got a delayed mode. Um, there's a hold over time which you can set um, and this is used to ignore gaps between coaches and wagons and what have you so the detector doesn't see the gap and think that the line's unoccupied when in actual fact it still is um, so that prevents it from resetting back to green too early and then the last program is the final delay which is where the detector decides that it's that the track is unoccupied and can finally reset the red LED back to green um, to show that the track is unoccupied. The way that you program it is, um, I'll just flip it around there, you can see there's a little brass push button there. You use the br brass push button in connection with a, a flashing LED and what you do is you find out how many LED flashes you need for the program that you want and you press the button and you count the LEDs and when you've reached the certain amount of LEDs that you need for the program that you want you simply release, release the button and that's it that's the module programmed for that program that you've chosen the connections on the front are pretty straightforward um, you've got six six terminals you've got positive in you've got negative in you've got positive out you've got channel 2 and channel 3 the channel 2 and the this one here the uh, positive out is for the uh, operation of your LEDs. The bottom terminal there is in case you want to fit a relay. You can fit a small relay and, and energise the relay through the module, you know, and maybe have additional lights working or possibly something else. I don't know, whatever you wanted to do, really. Or you don't have to use the relay at all. I don't use it. I haven't got any relays connected up to mine. Um, the idea of fitting it is you have to drill an 8mm hole in your baseboard and that is to accommodate the infrared sensor here. It needs to be an 8mm hole. And the way that I do mine is, um, I first of all work out where I want the detector module to be, then remove a sleeper um, and drill a marker hole in the, you know, in the middle of the area that you're left with and drill a pilot hole of about 3mm and then open the hole up to 8mm you know, for to fit the detector through. Once I've cleaned up any, um, you know, raggy bits of timber on the underside of the baseboard, you simply put the uh, the module in through the underside of the baseboard, um, and I'll just secure mine in place with a little bit of um, a little bit of epoxy glue. You can use blue tack if you wanted to, um, but you have to make sure that the um, you know the actual infrared part of the detector on the top here doesn't get uh, fouled with any glue or blue tack, otherwise it's going to start giving you giving you false readings and things like that. Um, the LEDs that uh, I'm using, I'm using bicoloured LEDs, red and green LEDs, um, which I find to be more convenient. The reason, partly the reason why I'm using those is, if you remember my control panel, I've got quite a few LEDs on the control panel, and I didn't want it to look too crowded with LEDs all over the place, which is why I went for, you know, a bicoloured LED for each module. 
The module itself comes pre-wired with resistors, so you don't need to have uh, you don't need to worry about resistors for your LEDs. You know, in case they get blown or anything, that they're already built in for you. Um, so, which is which is another handy feature. The voltage that the module can run from is uh, you can run it from either 12 between 12 and 25 volts DC or, or 12 and 16 volts AC. Now I'm running mine off AC current because I've got mine connected up to the DCC bus which is simply done through these two terminals here the positive in and the negative in uh, which as I say I've just got mine connected up to the DCC bus while all the other ones are as well and they all work absolutely fine um, you get quite a good um, instruction booklet with it as well it's there's a fair bit in the, in here a lot of information about what each program does and um, different settings and all this sort of thing and how to position it on your layout if you're not sure how to do it and that um, so yeah that's the uh, that's the the BUD2 NS uh, train detector module from block signal um, I just as I said I just thought I would share that with you in case anybody else was thinking of train detection um, modules and uh, you know it may, may be a one for you to consider as I say I cannot fault these I haven't had any trouble with these at all um, they run at about um, around about 17 pounds I think they are from the block signal and shop um, and I believe he's got a an eBay shop as well which I think is under the name of shockwaves which you can get them from their post free as well um, that's where I got mine from by the way um, so yeah that's uh, that's it that's the train detector module so I'll speak to you in another video soon cheers bye